Is your New Year's resolution to catch more and bigger trout? If it is, join me out on the water of Collins Lake. We just announced our inflation buster pricing for the months of January and February. We are featuring guided trips on Collins Lake for $125 per angler or $375 for the entire FHS pontoon boat. If you want to learn the finer points of trout fishing firsthand while battling hard charging Collins Lake rainbows and lightning trout, book your trip now. I'm Kel Kellogg and I look forward to seeing you out on the water this winter. Hey guys, Kel Kellogg here. I'm laughing because I'm surrounded by a big cloud of bugs here. There's like gnats and flies. There was a bee here a second ago buzzing me. And uh, I think it has to do with the weather conditions here. I'm, I'm here in the Sierra foothills. It's been very warm, it's very dry, it's very dusty. But we've got a little low pressure area pushing through this morning. And there's some blue sky over here and there's some really dark clouds over there and it's spitting raindrops. And uh, it's kind of invigorated the bug life and uh, I am apparently their best friend because they are they are swarming around me. I feel like I'm in Alaska. But uh, anyway, I didn't want to talk about all that. I wanted to talk about trout fishing tactics, which is a common subject here on the channel. I just came off two and a half months of almost daily fishing at Collins Lake. And uh, man, I made a lot of observations. I got to meet a lot, of, a lot of anglers on my boat, a lot of fans of the channel that came out and fished with me. But I got to observe a lot of other anglers in action out on the water. And some of them I got to observe over a fairly long span of time. There are a lot of retired guys out there that would fish every day for a week or two weeks. Um, we were talking to one guy that was staying there for a month and he was fishing, you know, at least for a few hours every single day. And um, I got to got to draw some conclusions about the, st the strengths of, of, of the angling community as a whole when it kind of comes to targeting trout. And I also got to analyze some of what I, what I consider to be the shortcomings of the trout fishing community. And uh, the number one shortcoming that, that I see, and I kind of coined a term for it, the thing that's keeping anglers from catching as many trout as they could be, the thing that's keeping guys from being consistently successful, I call it follow the leader syndrome. Um, a lot of guys, they, they get out on the water and they worry way too much about what boats A, B, and C are doing and they let those tactics affect their approach. Or, you know, the internet. The internet is a great place, but there's a lot of guys that are on the internet that are soaking up information and they're either soaking up bad information or they're soaking up bits and pieces of information that if they're not put into a, a systematic approach to angling, it will actually handicap them. I'm gonna show you something here. And, and I'm one of the guys that started this trend. A lot of guys will tell you they did it or it's been around forever and, and it has been around forever. But what I'm talking about, I'm talking about power trolling with large spoons, whether it's a speed spoon like this. This is a spoon I developed strictly for power trolling. It also works for casting and jigging, but it's a power trolling spoon. It's meant to be trolled fast and trolled aggressively. Um, you've heard guys talk about speedy shiners, power trolling with crocodiles, all that kind of stuff. Well, I was one of the guys 12 years ago that really started to bring this style of trolling back into the mainstream. Trolling spoons at, you know, three, four, even five miles an hour, pounding structure and catching very aggressive trout. Does the tactic work? Yes, it works for a couple of things. It works when the trout are in a very aggressive mindset and they're willing to chase. You can absolutely put a whooping on the trout or landlock kings with a lure like this, be it a speedy shiner, a speed spoon, um, whatever. But you can also use this tactic to cover a ton of water, find fish, maybe catch a few fish early in the day or when the conditions are right, and then once you've covered a lot of ground and found some perspective areas that are holding fish, you can go back on those areas and use tactics that might be you know, more effective than pulling fast hardware, but, but pulling the fast hardware early allows you to cover that ground and identify those areas quickly, okay? 
that's what power trolling should be used for. Those two things, when the fish are aggressive and in order to cover ground and find fish while having baits in the water. Now at Collins, you know, the whole power trolling, the whole, the whole speedy shiner deal, it's become a crutch for a lot of guys. I see it. It's, it's become their number one and for a lot of guys, their only method. And the bottom line is there are days when power trolling doesn't work. And even on days when it does work, there are periods of time when the fish aren't responsive to a power trolling approach. If the water's glassy calm, power trolling is seldom your best approach. But uh, I would be trolling out on the lake and I would be catching fish on threaded worms or maybe, you know, tea tiny streamer flies like that, trolling at, you know, 1.2 to 1.5 miles an hour. And I would have guys blowing past me, asking me what I was catching fish on. And I could tell, I, I knew what they had on the end of their line. They're trolling at four miles an hour. They, they, they'd either read online or they'd gone out to a lake at some point and they'd caught some fish on speedy shiners. And that is the, the mindset, the cool kids troll speedy shiners fast and they are living and dying by the speedy shiner. And it's kind of like a slot machine. You know, psychologically, I was a psych major back in college. The most, most, the strongest form of reinforcement is what you see on a slot machine. You put in a quarter, you pull the handle, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Oh, jackpot. Next coin, jackpot. Next coin, nothing. 35 pulls later, nothing. You're getting ready to leave, jackpot. And it just keeps you putting another quarter in the machine. Well, you're gonna find the same thing with power trolling or trolling worms or flies or whatever. You're gonna have enough success that if you think this is the only way to fish, you're gonna keep on doing it. But in reality, if you don't play follow the leader and you mix things up and you dial in your approach to the temperament of the fish on any given day, you're going to catch more fish. You're going to catch fish more consistently. And when you're catching more fish and catching fish consistently, you're going to catch more big fish. I try to always not follow the leader. Okay. If I go out to a lake, here's a, here's a pretty good example. Let's say I go out to the the high Sierras and I'm targeting maybe browns or max or big rainbows and all the guys on the lake are pulling something like that. They're pulling a husky jerk at three and four miles an hour. Am I going to put this on my line? No, because the trout have seen multiple husky jerks going three and four miles an hour. And yes, occasionally they're hooking fish on them. I'm not going to go with that. I am going to bust out a really large saltwater salmon fly like that. And I'm not gonna troll at three and four miles an hour. I'm gonna troll this at two and a half miles an hour. And when a big brown or a mac or a big rainbow comes up behind that fly, they may or may not hit, but I'm very confident that that, that is the first time they're encountering a fly that looks like that versus something that they've encountered many dozens of times in the past, like a husky jerk, like this one here. So I always try to not follow the leader. Um, at Collins Lake, I'll see the guys down by the, by the dam. Somebody will catch a fish down by the dam and all of a sudden there's 15 boats grinding on the dam and, and they're probably catching a few fish. But when I see that, I go out east or I go up to the mouth of the Narrows, or I go up to the North Bay. Um, but the last thing I wanna do is be down there in the middle of 15 boats grinding on a very small area because I know that's gonna shut the bite down. It's just not the best strategy for consistent success. Um, if I go to a lake and everybody at the lake is pulling big giant dodgers, which absolutely positively need to be in your tackle box. It's an approach you need to be able to employ, but if everybody in a given cove is pulling six inch dodgers like this fisheye or a sling blade or a big seps blade, I'm going naked or I'm going with a turbo. I'm never following the leader. I'm always giving the fish an alternative approach that they're not seeing. Um, if guys are going, you know, with, with something like that, maybe they're pulling small Rapalas, okay? I'm gonna reach in my box for a standard size trolling fly, or better yet, 
I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna pull out something like a small junior trolling fly and I'm gonna troll it naked and nine times out of 10, my boat is gonna catch more fish than the other guys around me. Everybody pulling Rapalas, they're gonna pick up a few fish. But if I go with an alternative approach, work through the kinks and figure out what I can get the fish to go on that other guys aren't pulling, I'm ahead of the game and I will end up catching more fish than most of the boats around me that are playing follow the leader. You see how it works? It's like playing with a cat with thread. Eventually, the cat will stop chasing the thread, but if you throw him a little ball of paper, it's game on again. So if we were playing with cats and everybody else in the room is throwing yarn at the cats, I'm gonna start balling up little pieces of paper and I'm gonna catch the attention of the, of the cats because they haven't seen many little balls of paper, but they're seeing, you know, yarn being twitched by them all day long. So take away from this video, don't follow the leader. Don't become a cultist. Don't fall into the, the cult of speedy shiner fishing. That's a part of your approach. You need to be able to troll fast, medium, and slow, and you need to have some money presentations in all those categories, but don't be the guy that goes out to the lake and trolls four miles an hour all day, every day, and pulls speedy shiners. Don't be Jed and Maynard out in the tin boat that hit the lake and troll, you know, cowbell flashers with a full threaded worm behind them all day, every day. All those tactics produce fish, but it's the guy that's able to tailor his approach to the temperament of the trout at any given time that's gonna catch the most fish, the biggest fish, and he's gonna be most consistently you know, successful on the water as compared to those one-dimensional anglers. Don't be a one-dimensional angler. Don't play follow the leader. I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube. If you're looking for gear, you know where to go, fishhuntshoot.com. And if you like this kind of content, please hit that subscribe button and you'll always know when I'm on here talking fishing tactics. Thanks for all the support, guys. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on and get away from this cloud of flying insects here. You have a great day and I'll catch you later, guys. Thank <laughs> you.